This is a production of Cornell University. All right, so let's take the next step. If we're thinking about this availability, we need to start thinking about how the nutrients are getting into the system and how they're being lost from the system. Okay? And this is where we get back to nutrient cycles and their losses. Okay? Nutrient cycles in soils tend to be leaky, especially in highly fertile soils. Now think about that term for a second. We'll, talk, we'll come back to that. Why are they especially leaky in highly fertile soils? Okay? Nutrient losses basically depend on four things. One is soil erosion. If I'm taking the soil away, I'm going to be taking the nutrients away. Certainly, if I have crops that are taking nutrients up, when I harvest that crop and take it someplace else, the nutrients are going to be going with it. I also have volatilization of gases and leaching. These two you guys are fairly familiar with. Okay? Now, let's go back to this idea about uh, highly fertile soils tend to be more leaky. Okay? It's not that they are inherently losing more stuff because they're highly fertile. It has to do with the fact that if you think about where the pools of nutrients are, okay, if the pool of nutrient is in the soil and the soil has a lot of fertility in it versus a soil that doesn't have a lot of fertility, given the same amount of, of erosion from each one of those soils, which one's going to be losing more nutrients? The one that has more fertility, right? If I lose a pound of soil from an acre of a highly, so highly fertile soil versus a, a, poorly, a, poor, a low fertility soil, I take a pound of soil off of each one of them, there's going to be more nutrients in the high fertility soil than the low fertility soil. Therefore, it is more leaky. Okay? The percentage of the entire system may not be any different. I may be losing 10% in both cases but the absolute amount is going to be different. Does that make sense? I'm not even seeing. Yes? Yeah? OK. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about each one of those. Erosion basically removes the phosphorus and the nitrogen in the solids materials. OK? But we're also going to see more erosion when we have enhanced. It's going to be enhanced when we have bare soil. OK? If I don't have something that's holding the soil in place, I'm going to have more erosion. Okay, if I have more erosion, I'm going to have more nutrient loss. Okay? Uh, <coughs> because of the nutrients, where, where this solid material is going, it's basically going down into streams and into lakes. This basically causes eutrophication downstream. So I see, I see al algal growth farther down in the system, or in lakes, in essence. Okay? Crop removal, this is necessary if we're cropping something. We're going to have to harvest. Okay? And if we harvest, we're basically taking it with us. The N and K are basically re removed the most from this system. Um, but we can minimize some of this loss by returning crop residues to the soil. If we're just taking the seed and leaving the rest behind, that rest, the biomass of the rest, is going to have NPK in it as well. And that's going to go back into the soil as that material decomposes. Okay? Gaseous loss, this has to do with the nitrogen cycle predominantly. Okay? But it can also have to do with sulfur. Okay? Basically, when you're looking at the uh, ammonification, once that amine group from the crop residue or the organic matter decomposes and is put into an ammonia, ammonia is a gas. So it can literally volatilize from the system. Okay? Certainly, when you burn stuff, you're going to have volatilization as well. Okay? And also, potentially, when I start go the system starts going anaerobic, okay? if I ha start having something like denitrification, okay? I'm taking it from nitrate and putting it into N2, the nitrate is an available form. Yes, it can be leached, but as it is converted into N2 gas, it becomes volatile, which means it can be lost from the system. Make sense? OK. Leaching is the next one. Basically, this is, loss, this is possible loss for all soluble nutrients. If it is soluble, it will move from the, the water. If the water is moving out of the soil system where the crop is growing, it's going to be taking those nutrients with them. Make sense? Okay. It's most significant when we're talking about things like nitrogen, sulfate, and potassium. Phosphorus can also be lost, but again, you have to think about this phosphorus. It binds very tightly, depending upon the pH, with <coughs> aluminum and iron at the low pHs, calcium at the high pHs, and actually organic matter in the mid-ranges. Mid okay? um, we can minimize this loss. Actually, we can minimize most of these losses by 
doing the right thing management wise, but when we're talking about leaching, we can minimize this loss by fertilizing at the right time and in the right amount. Why am I going to put excess nitrogen on the system when most of that's going to be leached away? Now, the reason I'm putting nitrogen on the system is for my plants, so I want to put it in a form that the plants can optimize getting and minimize its loss. Okay? Classic example there would be that slide that I showed you about rice. Okay? Putting in the different types of nitrogen, ammonium versus nitrate, into different parts of the system to minimize its loss from the system. Right? Keeping the nitrate in the aerobic zone, keeping the ammonia in the anaerobic zone. Yes, they're going to migrate, but it gives it one more step of the nitrogen cycle and the, the ability of the, uh, one more or, or slows down its loss and maximizes the plant's ability to capture it before it's lost. Does that make sense? Is that you guys remember that slide? Yeah? OK. This is all premised on one hypothesis. Well, maybe not premise, but one hypothesis sort of holds a lot of these things together. And this hypothesis is that healthy crops use nutrients better. Now let's think about this. Why do we think, I mean, if we're trying to, if we're trying to minimize loss from the system, we want to really maximize, one of the things that we want to do is maximize the nutrient uptake into the plants, right? Because the more the plants are taking up, the less is leaving the system. Now granted, we're going to harvest, but pot potentially we're putting the residue back. Okay, so why would healthy crops, healthy plants, use those nutrients better or prevent or reduce the amount of loss from the system, with the exception of the harvest? Think about it. Why would plants that are healthy versus unhealthy plants go? Well, if they're healthy, they'll be producing more biomass, so they'll be using more nutrients and less to be available to be nutrients. Exactly. So if they're healthy, they're going to be producing more biomass. And if they're producing more biomass, they're going to be harvesting more nutrients. They're harvesting more nutrients. There's less of it to be lost through volatilization and leaching. More biomass is also going to anchor more of the soil, so I'm going to lose less of my soil through erosion. I'm going to capture most of it in biomass which means some of it's going to be lost through crop harvesting, but if I put that residue back in the system, I'm basically putting it into that organic matter pool that's going to go right back into the soil. Does that make sense? Question. Does that work in a closed system as far as leaching goes? So if you have potted plants, where, what's the predominant loss? A closed, well, I, would, I, I understand the question of a closed system. I wouldn't actually call potted plants a closed system. But yeah, I understand the question there. So if we're having a sort of a greenhouse operation or a potted plant system, how would we reduce some of this? Well, certainly a potted plant system, you'd have a lot less erosion because you have a capture field. Okay? But potentially, material can be going out the bottom of the hole. Now, that bottom of the hole is where you're going to see a lot of the leaching. Now, how would you minimize that? Well, you could have better control of how much water is going into the system or what the, and more importantly, the nutrients that are in that. Okay? Now, those nutrients can be coming in as soluble fertilizer, but those nutrients can also be being solubilized in that soil media and being lost from the system. So a lot of control is right there. How you're delivering that water and in what amount. I'm sure most of you guys, if we think about these from pots sense, how, you know, house pots, people, people that are growing house plants and things like that versus greenhouse plants. In many greenhouse systems, you're basically, we just sort of excess water and let them come out the bottom because we have sort of a, the, the, you know, the saucer is really the base of the, of the greenhouse, the pad. Okay? But often you see in, with people that have um, house plants, we see the salts actually build up in those pots over time. That's when you start seeing the white coatings everywhere. That's the salts building up. The reason that, that we're not seeing the leaching in that system is we are actually seeing leaching. What's happening is the water is going down and sitting in the pot. And then as the plant respires, it's bringing that water back up into the system. So in essence, we're creating, I mean, it's not truly an arid system, but we're looking at evapotranspiration bringing that water back up. Now, 
the transpiration isn't going to get rid of the salts. And so in that scenario, we're actually seeing a buildup. Okay. It's not truly a closed system, but really a lot of that has to do with how we're adding the water and what's in that water and how that water is interacting with the soil media. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions about that? We feel good about this one? No? Yeah? Okay. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.